all, I'm Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. And in this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate some important concepts for how you combine different colors and alloys of gold together in one project safely. Patching them. I don't know what it, I love patching them. <laughs> like it's so weird. You love attaching them? Patching, like if, if, if a little hole burns in it or something, you have to, like you can actually repair them. Oh my God! Those are it's, the, it's because the metal is the most delicious thing that anyone's ever seen. How did you wind up with the all the world? different colors? Mm. I just always wanted to. I, I was addicted to rainbow sherbet when I was little, <laughs> <laughs> and I just like, like I don't know. There's something about this combination. Beautiful just, because they're all 22. Um, the the green is 18, just silver and gold. 18. So you alloyed them yourself? Alloyed them? Oh, I that word? No? did alloy these myself. Those except, are no, gorgeous. except for the apricot gold we bought. This this is bought. God, I, I love those. Oh, I'm way, so I, sorry I've seen that now. Ah! <laughs> no, okay. Really... okay, so Miranda is working on this fucking sensational pair of earrings <laughs> here, uh, which we've been working on for a while now. Mm. We've got these gorgeous balls. Mm, beautiful. Um, and we were talking before about like, these are all different alloys. Uh, that's a interesting way to, to get color and extra dimension is having these beautiful different colors. That's the 22 apricot. We've got the 22 yellow. We've also got 18 green, which uh, the 18 green and the 22 yellow, sorry, I'm spitting on you, uh, are both fusible. The 22 apricot is not. So that one you have to solder, but I mean, just, We've got these beautiful little spouts and the little twisted wire. I mean, it's just beyond deliciousness to put together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what we were talking about before was like, okay, but now the time has come to start putting all these together. Like how the fuck do you figure out what solder you have to use? So what I was explaining was that when you're combining gold and silver, or you're combining different alloys, different metals in general, it's the same principle. You look at the metals you're using, and you have to use a solder from the lowest melting of what you're combining to safely solder. So in other words, gold and silver, you're putting those together, you have to use silver solder because silver solder is the lower melting of the two metals. In this case, we've got 22 apricot, 22 yellow, 18 green. So we have to go to the lowest denominator, and I mean that in a good way, um, <laughs> for these to be able to solder them together. Now, because we don't have 18 green solder yet, which I'm working on that, just so you know, a little aside, we're gonna use 18 pink because 18 pink melts at a lower temperature than 22 apricot, 22 yellow, and 18 green. So that's why, you know what I mean, that's the thought process that, that goes through. We could also, if we wanted, we could use um, 18 yellow. But I think the 18 pink is a little more fun. Do you know what I'm saying? With the apricot and the whatever, mm -hmm. but you could. So in other words, you gotta go to the lowest common denominator and use that solder or lower. So in other words, you could use 18 yellow, 18 pink, or and 14 carat, any color. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's just the principle involved. And that's how I figure out all these things. Like, okay, what's the lowest? And that's true for any metals you're combining, okay? So, so what's our mission now? Are we soldering these this little twisted wire to our little spouts? Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing now. Okay. So then we've got the 18 pink, right? Uh, so you don't just solder at the same time. If I'm doing a bezel to a back sheet with a wire, yes, I will. But not in this case because I would have to put a whole lot of solder in there to flood it out to fill that. And these don't fit like crazy tight, which is fine, but it, it could, no. Okay. <laughs> Long story short, no, we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna tack this in like a spot, one or two little spots, and then we'll take the whole thing, we'll put it on whichever one of this is gonna, it's gonna go on, we'll put a ball or two of solder on the inside, and we'll heat down here to heat the whole piece. Mm -hmm and we'll do it and we'll have a setup also so that can't just hop off the top like 
that one just did <laughs> because uh, that's very inconvenient when you're soldering. Okay, so I'm going to cut. Now, what's this over here? That should be the piece. Right? It's 18 pink? Sure. My other one's by there. It's very important when you're doing stuff like this that you don't you know, end up with some solder left over from something else and you grab that and, you know, could have potentially tragic consequences. So usually if I have something that I'm not a thousand percent sure what it is, I just sort of, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. sweep it into my sweeps and whatever. And you know, when you cut the little pieces, a lot of times it tries to curl up, so you flatten like that. And I always put my solder over to the side. I feel like if I put it in, in here, then you're just like, I can't find anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ball up the solder really hot and fast like that. Because you don't want to let it oxidize mm -hmm. any more than it has to. You want it to be as instantaneous as humanly possible. So, you know, the whole thing when you solder or fuse is always look for the good spots first and that's where you go. Especially since we're really just tacking this in a spot or two. I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna go like, okay, right there I have a beautiful little spot of connection. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be where I put my first one. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna look for the other best spot, you know what I mean? You don't try to put it in like a hole. That never really works very well, okay? So I just added a little water to your paste box because uh, it's looking a little chunky. Now, normally in at my own bench, like at the beginning of the day, like turn your tank on, put a little hot water in your paste box, you know what I mean? Get your stuff ready to go. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm a little OCD, so you know, yeah, I, like to, I like to have all my stuff ready to go. Okay. So I'm just going to put a tiny little dab of solder, of uh, flux, excuse me, right where I'm going to be working. You know, like right there, like mm -hmm. that. And then I take a little tiny ball of solder, like that. And I put it right where I want it, like mm -hmm. that. I'm gonna heat gently because of course, you know, when the flux dries, things tend to pop out of place. Which is why I always have my tweezers in my hand, like ready to go, because if you're expecting things not to move, um, you do not have reasonable expectations. We could also probably move down to a double zero tip if we wanted, um, but this is fine. And I'm going to be heating the tube more than the wire because I don't want the solder to just go on the wire. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. Now, I do think you should move down to a double zero tip when you do this because that was fine, but very easy to go right. too far and get that wire too. So I want you to move down to the double zero tip and make sure you're pointing down here mm -hmm. because if you're just hitting right here, the solder is going to either just yeah. run onto the wire or you could melt the wire, which I don't okay. want you to do. So what I want you to do, the easiest thing to do is find every connection point on all of these and put a little ball of solder and tack them all, pickle them all, and then we'll pick one of these and one of your balls and we'll put it together. Okay? okay? I know you can.